Welcome design students. In this video we're going to create a classic hammer and peg toy like this one. We're going to learn some basic modeling techniques in Maya and we're also going to learn how to apply materials and how to create an advanced wood texture like this and how to create a nice render with an infinite background or an infinite shadow plane like this. So let's get started. So here we are in Maya and um, we're going to start with a box or cube. You can find the cube in your poly modeling shelf right here. And then we're going to push F on the keyboard to focus on it. And let's zoom out a little bit. Now to shape this cube, this is going to be the ends of our toy. So I'm going to use the scale tool. Scale it in this way. Scale it out this way. And I'm going to scale it up. Oops, this way. until it looks something like that. Then I'm going to switch to the Move tool, and remember you can do that by pushing W on your keyboard. Or you can click right here and move it up so it sits on the floor, or the ground plane, which is represented by the grid here. Then I'm going to move it over. And let's create another cube, and this cube will be for the pegboard base thing. So let's Scale this one out this way so it's about as wide as our inboard, and then make it a little longer, and then scale it in in the y direction to make it a little thinner. I'm going to move this up, then we're going to move the inboard inward so that this stays centered. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I want the inboard to be positioned so that it is halfway in here, so that this is halfway in the thickness of the board. I think I want to make this a little thicker. I'm going to get my scale tool, and we can do that here, or we can push R on the keyboard. And it would be nice if I could see both of the ed both of the edges of these objects instead of only when I have them selected as it is now. To turn on that feature in Maya, we come to the display settings and we click this one right here, wireframe on shaded. And then we can see the edges no matter if we have it selected or not. So I'm going to move this a little bit so that it's about halfway inside the other end box. And then I'm going to make another box and put it on the other end here, but to do that I'm simply going to hold down shift and move it in the X direction and that creates a copy. And I think that looks pretty good. Now what we've done here is called boxing out. We boxed out our object and all we were doing here was working out the proportions of it to make sure everything looked correct. And now we're going to work on this end piece here. I want it to look like this is a, a piece of woodworking where there's a joint cut in this object here, in this end piece, for this pegboard. So we need to create some edges here to um, define the notch. To do that, I'm going to use the multi-cut tool. The multi-cut tool can be found here in your poly modeling shelf right here. It can also be found in your modeling toolbar or modeling tool set, which is over here. Here is the multi-cut tool. Once we have the multi-cut tool, notice we have the um, we can click and just sort of define an edge like so if we want to. But we can also hold down control. We can there are a number of shortcuts on the multi-cut tool, but the one we're going to use right now is we're going to hold down control and that creates an edge loop around the entire mesh. So we're going to create an edge loop there, an edge loop on the bottom, and then if we hover over these uh, horizontal edges, we can create a vertical edge loop around the entire edge of the box. And we've now created our notch. So let's get the Move tool now and switch to Object Mode and move the end over. And you can see here that we now have some polygons that define where the notch is supposed to be. So we're going to switch to face mode and then delete these faces 
so that we have our actual notch. But now we have a problem. We have a void here. We need to fill this void. So to fill this void, we're going to use the bridge tool. To use the bridge tool, we're going to switch to edge mode. We're going to select this edge and then select this one. And then we're going to shift, right click, and select bridge. And that creates a polygon between the two selected edges. Bridge is also found over here in your modeling tools. Now we have a hole here and a hole here that we need to fill. So we can double click on that hole and that selects the edges all around the entire hole. And then let's hold down shift and double click on this other hole. And now we have both edge loops around each hole selected. And we're going to hold down shift and select fill hole. And now we've filled the gaps in our notch and we have an actual defined notch here. And now we need to make this look like a finished piece of woodwork. So what we're going to do next is bevel or chamfer, that's another word for it, these corner edges to round them off. Now if we switch to edge mode and we click one of these edges, in order to select both of them, since we've divided this in half, we'd have to hold down shift and click the other one. But another way we can do it is just to double click and that selects an entire edge loop. So I'm going to hold down shift each time and double click on each corner edge to select both those edges. And once I have them all selected, I'm going to shift right click and select bevel edge. And that splits that edge into two and moves them apart. We can adjust how rounded we want it by adjusting the fraction here. I think I'm going to leave mine at 0.3. We can also further round off this corner by adding segments. So I'm going to add 10 segments. And that makes that nice and round. Now another thing we want to do is we also want to bevel the edges on each corner here to make it look like it's nice and sanded. To do that, we have to be able to select these edges. If I double click, I'm only going to select here and it won't allow me to go beyond where I've beveled it here. So what I need to do is easily select these edges around the face here. The easiest way to do that is to hit the space bar and switch to four views and then hover your mouse over a side view and hit that to expand that view. Zoom in some, make sure you're in edge mode and then click and drag a marquee selection so that it's halfway into the edges on this box. And then hold down control and then deselect these edges. And all you have to do is touch them. Deselect the horizontal edges. And then switch back to perspective view and make sure that you deselect these two as well. And now we can shift right click and bevel this edge. We're not going to bevel it as much. Maybe about like that and give it four segments. And then we're going to do the same thing around this corner here. So we're going to use our space bar to go to four views, hover the mouse over the side view, space bar again, and we're going to drag a marquee selection in like this and then hold down control and drag it in from the other side so that we're just touching those horizontal edges here to deselect them and then we're going to switch back to perspective view I'm using my spacebar each time and we're going to select this edge this edge and this edge but not these two corners on the inside go around to the other side and select this edge, this edge, and this edge. So we have all the corner edges selected except for the two inside corners. And then we're going to shift, right click, and bevel again. And now we have this nice finished uh, end piece. So I'm going to switch to object mode and get the move tool and move this back into place. And then I'm going to simply copy this one for the other end. I'm going to delete this one now because I don't need it. And I'm going to hold down shift and move this to the other side. 
and then I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. I'm going to get my rotate tool and when I rotate it you can see that mine is snapping. If yours does not snap then you can turn on snapping by double clicking on your rotate tool and that brings up the tool settings and you need to turn on step snap right here. I have it on relative. You can keep your tool settings docked right here next to your outliner if you just drop it right there like that and that becomes a tab here. So now that I have the snapping turn, oops, I have snapping turned off. So I'm going to turn snapping back on. And rotate this 180 degrees so that it faces the other way. And then we're going to move it into place. And there we go. So the final thing we need to do is cre create a peg and then we need to lay out our edges so that we can have some edges and polygons and vertices in order to make holes for the pegs. So let's create a cylinder that will represent our peg. Move it so that it's halfway embedded halfway in the pegboard. Then get the scale tool and scale it only in the X and Y direction to make it thinner. And then scale it up in the Y axis switch to your move tool and move it down. You don't want it to embed in the ground. I think mine's a little too tall so I'm going to scale it some more and shorten it up in the y-axis. And then we can just leave that sitting right there for now. What we're going to have is two rows of four pegs. So now let's lay out the edges, the subdivisions on this pegboard box so that we can have vertices in the correct place to make our holes. To do that, select the pegboard box Go to the Attributes Editor and find the Polycube 1 node right here. And then we're going to give it some subdivisions. In this direction, I want you to give it 10. And then in this direction, I want you to give it 6. And that should give us a place to have two rows of pegs. We're going to create our hole with these four polygons right here. So let's make sure we line these up centered on this, these two, where these two edges cross right here. So let's switch to the top view by hitting your space bar and then hover your mouse over the top view and hit your space bar. And we have to turn on wireframe on shaded in this viewport. And let's zoom in a little bit, get the scale tool and maybe scale this out. I think it could be a little, little bigger. Switch back to the move tool and what we want to do is line it up so that this edge is centered on this horizontal edge and that this edge is centered on this vertical edge here. And then we're going to hold down shift and create another peg going this way and zoom in on it as well. Oops. And make sure that it is centered. And then we can select both of these and move them out like so. So we have two rows of four. And then we need to select each pair and zoom in on them and make sure that they are centered vertically where they're supposed to be. If you need to move them horizontally, you can do that too, but you shouldn't because you should have only moved them in the x-axis. And when we're done, switch back to the perspective view zoom out some, and this is what you should have. Something that looks like this. Now when we come back in the next video, we're going to begin to create the holes. Be sure to save your file if you haven't already, and so you can pick up and work on it later on. Just go to File, Save As, name it something like Toy, or Peg Toy, or Hammer Toy, or whatever you want to name it, just so we can pick it up and work on it later. We'll create a project folder for this in another video. And I'll see you in the next one.